Hello there, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Two World Podcast. My name is Ken, and I'm honored to, uh, today to be part of the team here as we discuss and ruminate over uh, another episode of um, the TV show that was called and still called, I guess, Northern Exposure. I'd um, like to introduce our two co-hosts for the Two World Podcast. First, we have... Jacob. And in addition, we have... I am Barney. All right. We hope you will enjoy this one as much as we do presenting it. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to remember if it was Ken, you, or Barney, if it was you that recommended this um, episode. And I, I, I have the impression that it was a favorite for both of you. And so maybe if either of you remember who it was that first suggested it, or even if you'd like to say just a little bit about the title of the episode, just to give us a mm -hmm. little introduction to what we're talking about today. Yeah, the, the title is from season three, and the title is Wake Up Call. And um, it, I don't know if it, it wasn't necessarily intentional or not, but um, after in our previous episode, Northern Exposure episode, having discussed spring break, here we are with another spring <laughs> themed mm -hmm. show taking place as spring has sp sprung or is in the midst of springing. And um, yeah, this is this is one of this is one of my favorite episodes, um, not in a way that it's hard to kind of explain this. It's not my favorite episode as in my favorite. <laughs> it's, it's if you can get the, the intonation of the word there. Um, it's one of my favorite episodes because there's a lot of depth to this episode. There's a lot that goes on. And I feel that they combine the stories together very well. And I don't know as as much as or as little as Maurice is in this episode. I feel like it's also a strong Maurice episode, and I really appreciate what Maurice goes through. I appreciate his journey in this episode. You know, a lot we get to see kind of a different side of him. A lot of the time, we just see this gruff guy who, okay, here he's gruff, he's conservative, he's interested in making money, um, and and that's and and he wants to boss people around if he can, but. Today, we see him kind of go through a real journey in this episode, even though it's just over a handful of scenes. And and then, of course, the journey that we have, um, that we see Joel go through, um, in, in connected with kind of in the same orbit of Shelley and then um, Graham Greene's character, um, Leonard. And, um, and later, guys, help me to remember, I want to bring this together with... A, a kind of a little extra anecdote I have connected with this story that I'd like to share um, before we close, or some time later in the show. But oh, over overall, there's there's really a lot of fun things going on here, and um, it, even from the very beginning, when um, when we see almost right at the beginning, Hauling is really interested in breakfast and eggs, and then at the very end of the show, we see all of this new life from a bunch of eggs. And I think that's just extra special too. Um, yeah, Ken, how about yourself? What what were your feelings of um, seeing this episode again uh, after a while? Well, I find it interesting that you brought up Maurice in, initially because there are so many subplots contained within this one. Um, yeah, we really get to see as, as Maurice's character now is into its third season. I mean, he, he really is distraught and lonely and and he really has no way to address this loneliness and i think it's neat that um the writers utilized ed at one point uh mm -hmm. to be there for maurice because ed has ed has a habit of being there for people and uh as as they were going through maurice's things that somehow held meaning for him um i i thought that was really important um, for me, the episode, the, the subplot with Joel is, is just so rich. Um, truly he is experiencing wake up calls of, of great magnitude. 
when he finally comes to the realization and reminisces about uh, when he first, as a as an intern doing rounds, um, was so so terrible with patients, and I think now in the back of his mind he has come to a realization that he kind of still is, <laughs> and he's forgotten um, what he needs to do. And and Leonard's character, oh my, just uh, just an absolute jewel with with the normal comedic uh, moments thrown in, you know. Um, Joel trying to get Leonard out of the way. Uh, remember, uh, next, next. And Marilyn walks in. There is no next. <laughs> so they, you know, they, they still have a way of lightening things a bit. But the way Leonard deals with Shelly and, uh, you know. Well, Jacob, we always we always look to you as the person who hasn't seen them 14 mm. times. <laughs> that <laughs> fresh perspective. <laughs> yes, um, I agree with what you both have said that um, that these two main subplots um, really um, jumped out to me and de definitely Joel's uh, wake up call. And it's so interesting as, as you're talking there about what Joel's trying to do, he's trying to be very scientific and systematic in how he um, interviews his patients, but he's doing it in a way that is almost um, impersonal and disconnected with the patient. Like he's going down a checklist and he's, he's trying to quickly find um, symptoms and he's trying to um, arrive at some type of prognosis, but um, he's not really listening on a deeper level. And so while he's annoyed that there's this um, other uh practitioner of medicine who has a very different philosophy there shadowing him. Um, he doesn't realize that the other person's actually practicing medicine at the, in the, in the moment. Um, he's assuming they're just being annoying and asking random questions and getting in the way, but really the other, uh, practitioner there, um, Mar is it Marilyn's husband? Is that right? Um, I'm trying uh, to cousin, oh, oh, cousin, cousin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he is much, um, more attuned to people's stories and their needs. And he's listening on a much deeper level than Joel is. So there are things that Joel just can't hear or catch because he's not taking the time to know his patients and to really kind of plumb the depths of what they're going through. So I thought it was so incredible how this other um, example of practicing medicine was, was shown there and um, outside of the box, but um, kind of like a huge, um, encouragement to really listen to people like if particularly if you're in medicine but just in general like a wake-up call in life for us as human beings to look at the people around us and ask the question am i just going through the motions and quickly trying to rush through my to-do list or am i actually hearing their story and encountering them on a deeper level and recognizing their true needs so um that was very powerful and and i'm so glad that um, by the end of the episode, Joel recognizes that he, he gets a wake up call and then he is actually able to respond. So yeah, that was fantastic. Jacob, if, if I may ask you, um, in the initial interaction between Leonard and, and Joel, um, at one point, Leonard said something to the effect of, um, my, you, it's remarkable how quickly you come to a diagnosis. Yes. Did you sense sarcasm within that? Yes. Or is he genuinely saying by conventional medicine, which I'm here to observe, you have remarkably reached a diagnosis very quickly. I'm mm. curious your reaction. Well, that's a good question, Ken. Um, well, there are several moments where he says something hard to Joel. Um, mm. I'm trying to think. Does he call him boring at one point? Yeah, uh, I or... wanted to I wanted to bring that up. I, I wanted to get your take on that too, Jacob, because <laughs> That is the precipice moment. The show could have was teetering right then when Graham, when sorry, when Leonard says, "You're boring," you know, you're bored with your practice because you're boring. And not just there, he takes it a step further and he says, "You're the most boring person I've ever met." And yes. I think the first time I saw that, I thought, "Whoa, whoa, this is." the end, Joel is going to go crazy, you know, because he has almost no introspection at all. And, and this is going to end badly. 
Um, how did you feel, Jacob? What do you? Well, how, what were you going through at that time? Uh, I guess. Um, yes, I was definitely uh, shocked. Um, but at the same time, I think I started catching on that um, Leonard is it Leonard? I'm sorry that um, yeah. that he's practicing medicine all throughout the episode. So he's kind of like listening and recognizing where people are and maybe where they're stuck, maybe due to their own psychology and background and as much as their ailment. And he is saying just what they need to hear to move them forward. So um, I think, you know, when Ken asked the question earlier, did he mean it when he said you, you arrive at your um, conclusion so quickly? I don't know that he, I think that it was a little bit sarcastic, but it was, it was actually meant to um, direct Joel to reflect. And it was meant to actually push him towards a different way of being. And I think the comment that you're bored with your practice because you're boring, you're the most boring person I met, I, I know is similarly um, not just a statement on face value, but an effort of, on his part to push Joel to change and mm -hmm. to be healthier, <laughs> to give him a wake up call so that he'll be a better doctor, but like also a happier human being. So I guess in a way he's like the hero of the episode, even though he's in this regard, even though he's saying these hard things to Joel, he's doing it in a way. Cause it's what Joel, it's the thing Joel needs to hear to change. And, and if he went about it in too in, um, a polite of a fashion or, and in a different way, maybe Joel couldn't hear it. So he kind of takes this real direct <laughs> approach with, with some amount of, um, uh, sarcasm or, or, or humor mixed in there. But, um, but then again, I guess maybe he is also a straight shooter too, but it just feels like he was directing Joel with that. So that's my take. What do you guys think? There was a little bit of a save at the end of that scene where um, Leonard says something like, well, Joel, at least being angry isn't boring. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, it was a ha ha laugh of sorts, but yet it was also saying, you know, that it's okay. You know, it's okay to, to you have emotion uh, within your work. Um, let's have more of it, but perhaps not just anger. <laughs> Interest in a person's life is, is, is vital as well. Yeah. And I'm wondering, like, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but um, is, is he kind of acknowledging that Joel getting angry is a step towards something? At least maybe anger can lead to some sort of change and get him unstuck mm -hmm. in his pattern. And so I know it's a funny thing. Yeah, at least anger is not boring, but like as the medicine man, like if he's trying to help Joel, he's kind of trying to help him get unstuck too. So maybe the anger can help Joel move in some way. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Even if, if at, at first it seems unpleasant, maybe it can get the ball rolling. So um, yeah. What did you think, Barney? Yeah, it's it's funny that 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 it comes back to the angry part because when when he first sees Shelley and we we see his demeanor and he does seem stern and she asks him, you know, Doctor Fleischman, are you angry? Are you upset about something? He's like, you know, no, this is just my detached, you know, demeanor of you know evaluating blah blah blah, and mm -hmm. and then then we see. Oh yeah, if we are focusing, and then later he says, well, "I'm trying to, you know, be empirical and come up with this blah blah blah." And then, you know, if we see it as a strictly robotic, you know, empirical, you know, scientific approach to anything, yeah, there's no emotion in there. Um, and then, of course, now this day and age, we see, you know, the doctor has to have, um, you know, empathy and you know, be sympathetic and be listening. You know, there has to be this balance. And, and now when I discuss this with you guys, I wonder, did Marilyn ask Leonard mm -hmm. to come? Oh. Did she see Joel is stuck and he needs someone to unstick him and he can only get unstuck. He can only get this wake up call from a shaman. And, and now I'm seeing Leonard, you know, he says, you know, when he's like, wow, that's so fast. You know, sometimes I go fishing, I go hunting, I stay at their houses. You know, sometimes it takes like eight days to come up with a diagnosis. And now I'm wondering, 
Leonard is at Joel's office before Joel arrives. You know, he's there. He's checking things out. You know, just like you said, Jacob, that Leonard is practicing medicine on Joel without Joel realizing it. And then through hearing, hearing Joel or what Joel isn't saying or just the body language, he knows how to push him in the right direction. And um, at the very conclusion, um, we can really see that there is growth in Joel because Joel thinks that he has the best anecdote, the best story to kind of prove to Leonard that Joel is really a good doctor. And he's, you know, he's like, there was, I, I, I'm putting a lot into it. You know, Joel was telling the story in a very wonderful, composed and kind of really reflective way and saying, in a sense, you know, here was this case that nobody could solve. And when I sat down and listened to the patient, he found out what it was. And Leonard knew what it was, <laughs> this rare thing. And, he, and Leonard's like, oh, yeah, we have that up here, too. So, but as, as much as he kind of took the a little bit of the wind out of Joel's sails, Joel didn't get annoyed by that. We see that he really kind of sensed some camaraderie with Leonard as an equal in that case, in that case, instead of thinking, I'm the one telling the story here, you know, <laughs> don't step on my toes while I'm trying to tell this awesome thing that happened. And um, yeah, and then I love the music montage at the end where wow. we're not, we're not hearing, wow. but we're seeing Joel enjoying being a doctor again when mm -hmm. he's with that elderly patient. That was so good at the end. I really yes, loved it. That. Was. Mm -hmm. Maybe for the sake of our viewers and listeners, um, and there's so much more yet to get to, <laughs> um, Shelly being the um, young girlfriend of the bar owner has developed this um, terrible rash which seems to have no limits and, and really is spreading all over her. And um, Joel, with his conventional medicine, prescribes cortisone, right? You know, try the cortisone, and it's, and it's not getting better. And um, the little cosmic parts of this program, Northern Exposure, um, are certainly there in that the, the – um, the diagnosis becomes that she's simply uh, shedding some skin here, like not unlike a snake, and uh, it will too pass. As uh, Leonard said at one point, you know, in the end, Joel, when you're diagnosing and I'm diagnosing, um, sometimes people die, but most of the time in the end, it's their bodies that heal themselves. Hopefully for Joel at that moment, it was the first Time we can we can sort of uh, reach across the aisle and 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 be in agreement <laughs> in attitude and yeah. Can I just uh, bring up a funny aside um, from the episode that relates to um, my interest as in being a gamer? Okay, <laughs> uh, I thought it was so oh. funny that when Leonard <laughs> first comes and Joel's like, oh, I, it's it's not going to be possible for you to shadow me. I'm sorry. And, and, and he's like, well, I'm, I don't understand that. I thought this was cleared with Marilyn and Joel goes out to talk with Marilyn. She said, I asked you about that last week. And he said, when did you ask me? She said, when you were playing game boy, he said, when I was playing game boy, <laughs> like, why would you ask me when I'm playing game boy? And she's like, well, I just asked you and you said it was okay. And, um, you know, just for our listeners, um, <laughs> any of you who know game boy was this really popular handheld device and, um, late 80s early 90s and it was yeah very widely popular and even adults got into it with games like tetris and puzzle games and other things and so yeah so that's yet another um example of joel not practicing good listening because he's uh distracted by his video games <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was good. well could we um spend a little time with the other main thread that that um, that you brought up at the beginning of the episode. Um, and I'm trying to remember the character's name. I'm sorry. It's not hauling. It's, the, um, oh, it's the character Maurice. who Maurice, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. who's, um, really dissatisfied with the status mm -hmm. quo. It seems like everything that is normal about his routine, he starts to find boring or undesirable. And like from the breakfast he eats to the music that, um, is being played, um, on the radio. And so, um, I think Barney, you were saying that this is really 
quite an important episode for fleshing out Maurice's character. And so could we spend a little time with that thread? Yeah, I was even um, uh, imp- impressed and kind of had to remind myself that this this episode was probably 1991 or 1992. And um, here they are, like, like, you know, Maurice is talking about Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee, you know, he's talking about French roast, he's talking about a lot of really kind of now things that um, were kind of, um, I don't want to say cutting edge, but like, at that time, you know, what would it have been 30 years ago or so? People weren't so concerned about that, those kind of um, different blends of, you know, kind of gourmet coffees. They're like, you know, is it Colombian? Or is it, I don't know, instant you know and <laughs> and yeah it's interesting to see that um maurice getting in a, himself also feeling like recognizing that he is he or the world around him is in some rut and he's missing something but he doesn't know what it is he just knows that that he is really dissatisfied with with what's happening and and letting the people around him know as much you know if it's from um you know, it, 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 we we kind of pick up these clues. He has been doing the same thing every day or almost every day for a while, you know, having the same coffee, putting on the same aftershave. Um, he, he realizes that he's been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And somehow it caught up with him and he's unhappy about that, but he can't quite put his finger on why or how. And and then how would you um, kind of unpack a little further, or Ken, either one of you, the um, the idea of the wake up call playing out in his in his story arc in this episode? Um, I think it plays out in the in the again the moments with Ed that I had mentioned earlier, where you know you're looking at relics that uh, are meaningful, and in the midst of a a spring cleaning of sorts, there are certain things that cannot be thrown away. And, um, and, and Barney um, referencing that final scene with the music and everything. And the the shot of Maurice uh, playing the bagpipes on his roof. um, It had to be therapeutic for him, I guess, at that moment. Um, I also see when he, you know, he really has no one to talk to really calling the bar owner was previously his best friend, but their relationship has been strained ever since in many ways because of Shelley. Um, so he's, he's going to, he's going to lambaste anyone within reach. And, uh, you know, Ruth Ann was included. Um, I, I, Maurice is, is certainly, um, filled with anger and angst and, and, uh, clinically depressed and and uh, you know all of the terms that we can we can come up with barney i was um i don't remember the french roast and those things being mentioned that really is cool that you remember that and um yes that is something that's still very much a part of of uh, the hip culture today um interesting that is interesting yes well i i'm kind of wondering just as you both explained that to me, to what extent is the show talking about returning to our roots, uh, the sources, the foundations, like the inheritance or the culture we've received when we are stuck um, instead of just the, I don't want to say it, the modern answer, like the, the recent, trend like because for example like joel's story arc you know he's talking with the shaman who has a much um older like i don't know cultural like um what do you want to call it lens like in in his practice it's it's a different type of framework than what joel's using and then this whole connection with the bagpipes and his um maurice's heritage and this like scottish heritage like going back to the roots or his foundation to kind of meet his struggle in the present. I feel like the show is kind of juggling that theme often anyway, because of the mix of people um, in Sicily, you have this Inuit culture with such, you know, rich heritage. So these ancient themes often get integrated with modern life. 
is that, is this yet another example of that where the show says, you know, part of our wake up call is a return to like something deeper that has always been a part of us or uh, instead of just the topical service level things of our routine that we're bored with, there's something deeper going on that we've carried with us from, you know, our youth or that was given to us from our, our family from before our time, you know, is there anything like that going on? Um, I'll just jump in quickly, Barney. And then you've provided a wonderful segue into um, Maggie's situation in this episode. Maggie also in that rut of, well, um, I guess I'll have to wait for the uh, next round of divorces before I can perhaps have a meaningful relationship um, in my life with, with a, a, you know, a love partner. Um, maybe we could take off from there. Sorry to jump in there, Barney. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that part of Maggie too, because this really gets into kind of, um, a, a real key Northern exposure thing of, of like the kind of mystical, you know, fantastical things, but, um, d discussing, just getting just one little touch on Maurice's story again, discussing this the way that we do instead of like chronologically through the episode it helps me to put together exactly he maurice is starting off talking about these trendy new coffees and then ruth ann is explaining to him about these this new trend in aftershave you know oh these days you know jeffrey beam everyone all the designers are putting out some aftershave you know and but the thing that Maurice is searching for isn't some new trend. It's not some new coffee. It's some not some new fancy aftershave. Um, it's yeah, getting back to his roots. And, and I, I bet that this is a statement that they're making that um, inviting people to take a step back and to kind of um, maybe caution themselves. What are we, are we going too fast? Are we forgetting where we're coming from? Are we really just progressing way too far, way too fast these days, everybody? And, um, you know, maybe we need to blend in. You know, we can't leave our past behind us. We've got to kind of acknowledge it and maybe make room for it in our lives too. And, and when we do, we remember a lot of satisfying and fulfilling things from that as well. And, and I think we see that with, um, you know, so many memories are triggered by smells and sights and sounds and whatnot. But I think especially smell, I think that smell, they say, is really closely um, connected with memories. And when he smells the, the pipe that he, you know, he finds the pipe, his grandfather's pipe, I guess, and he smells it and he can still smell the cherry blend tobacco and he said, and, and that starts him really kind of, we see the things start to fall away from him and we kind of see him recognizing what, um, what he needed and, um, to get him through this, this funk and, um, yeah. And then the, the pipes, the back pipes and remembering Oklahoma and, you know, where he was from and, um, kind of getting that. And then remembering what I guess he said his mom did with the spring cleaning with putting everything out there and getting everything into the house and spick and span. And, and, um, we, we see that in his, his character in general, he really likes things. Um, he does like things tidy and neat at his house. We see, and um, and we see this kind of this foundation. We maybe we get a little bit better sense of why he is who he is and how he where he came from and and the things that he's still hanging on to. Um, and I like that they that they gave some meaning, some background to who Maurice is in this episode. Um, and then, yeah, and then finally shifting toward toward Maggie. Um, in her case, she's think she's stuck in the past at the beginning of the episode, and um, I don't know, I don't know where where she ends up. You know, was was this really a bear? Was this really some guy? Was it just something that she was even just imagining happening? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, that's the fun thing about Northern Exposure that that they can do this, but. Um, uh, the scene where, um, you know, this, this, this very handsome, you know, Swedish or possibly, you know, bear as a human person, whatever it is, um, whoever he is, you know, they keep meeting and, um, and, 
Uh, you know, I'm thinking of the scene where he carries her across the creek to his where he lives, and it's like a cave, and um, she finds a lot of you know a lot of the episodes after Rick um, passes, which we talked about earlier. Um, she's on her own a lot, and and usually she she gives us the sense that she's strong about that and doesn't mind that, and she's independent and she's okay with that, and then. This episode has a real tender side of her that we see where she also is, is searching for something. And um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Does, does this story fit into the wake up call part of it? Or uh, if it does, how that, that I'm not, I couldn't quite um, fit that into the title. Um, Barney, I think it fits in the, in the sense that, um, and I love your, um, insinuating that perhaps it was a dream and even if it was a dream she she's she's been um she's awakened to the fact that um in spite of the tragic circumstances of her past um relationships that she can still be open to um being loved and and returning love without the absolute worry of the catastrophe that might occur um i love this character that may or may not be a bear in that sense that um they gave him the lines to say um i knew that i knew there was something missing in my life when i looked up into, into the airplane that you were flying and saw you and she of course gets that and and maybe she hasn't thought about it in a while a little bit simplistic but for me, that's that's her reawakening to a relationship that may or may not yet occur. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a really good explanation, Ken. And maybe just to piggyback on that, um, not only waking up to the idea of um, potentially having a relationship and that kind of reintroducing the possibility to her, but also, and maybe you were getting at this with the comment about the airplane, but for her to be seen by another person and to be deemed um, um, lovable and worthy of, of affection and by somebody that, that she too, when she sees them feels the same way that that's a very powerful truth. Like I'm, you know, speaking as her, like uh, to, to, I'm lovable. Somebody can see me and care for me and I could feel the same about them. So it's also about her own identity and um, not being the bearer of some curse just that always dooms her to be alone, but like, no, she can be seen and loved by, by somebody who's also um, amazing that she, and, and you're right. It is fascinating that the way the show plays around with the supernatural. And I wish I knew more about the, the if there are legends in Inuit culture about bears appearing as humans. I, I don't know, but I wonder if it's, it's building off of some of the um, local folklore or not, but, um, but it seems like once again, each character in this episode who is kind of highlighted gets something that they need to move on and to see themselves in a more positive light and to be healthier. Like, I guess Holling is that reconnection with his roots. Joel is the uh, understanding of like a deeper way to listen to people for her. It's this, um, feeling of being loved and um, and for Shelly this idea that uh, what she's going through is just part of an emergence in herself into a, a better place like she's shedding her skin she's coming up coming out um, healthier and lighter and so I, maybe that's part of the wake-up call each one is different and each one is what the person needed <laughs> mm -hmm. and and I, I, I like how uh, each of these stories kind of touches on some aspect of what spring is, um, you know, in, in Maurice's case, the, the spring cleaning in Shelley's case, the, the rebirth in Maggie's case, you know, um, spring awakening love, you know, that's the time when, you know, all the animals are, are, um, you know, awake and, and, you know, spring fever and whatnot. And, um, and then, uh, maybe Joel's, Joel's case, um, 
I don't, I don't know. I'm, the new diseases lost, that happen. In, there, <laughs> the new illness. There it is. That's what it is. That's what, I was, is. That's what I was. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did you any of you? I mean, the, I we could really go on and on about this episode um, about Chris kind of kind of narrating, kind of um, keeping things moving throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and the, the chicks, all of those chicks at the very end of the episode. I love that. Um, did either of you have final comments or anything else you wanted to discuss for today? I really enjoyed this episode. It was, mm. I found it, it took me a while to um, latch on to something that I could conceptually say, this is what I'm going to say when we, when we, get together because it for some reason it took me a while i mean i i knew the title of the episode and i could see some of the parts of the story fitting into that but for some reason this one didn't wasn't as clear cut or not i shouldn't say clear cut but it it was a little more obscure for me until a little bit later in the episode but i'm really glad we watched it i i each each installment we we have in this show i'm enjoying more and more learning about the characters and this one was a great addition. So mm-hmm. yeah, two thumbs up from me or a thumb yeah. up from me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You only get, you only let one vote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think for me, I, um, one of the magical things about this show is they did another spring episode, very different mm-hmm. from spring break. Um, and they, they, the seasons were an important factor in this program. Sometimes, mm-hmm. Um, and of course, programs don't know how long their tenure is going to be, but it could have been like with the spring break episode. Okay, we did spring. Uh, maybe we'll do summer sometime. Maybe we'll do when, you know, it, there was a con- that nice continual flow of it's the next year. And um, mm-hmm. here's where these people are in their lives and the wake up calls that ensued. Yeah. And this um, episode actually is kind of near and dear to, to me in my, in my heart it has holds a special place in my heart. Um, when I was teaching at the medical school, we um, had a tragedy and actually we um, lost one of our students. And um, I, I don't know what inspired me, but a few weeks later, um, I had just a, a little kind of um, elective course and I had occasionally been showing some Northern Exposure episodes. And I showed this episode and it felt very right. Like this was the episode to show these students who want to be doctors. And I kind of had the sense that they were feeling a little lost um, after this real struggle that, that everyone was going through emotionally. And there was just nothing to discuss after the episode finished. You know, there it's kind of spoke everything that the episode spoke and then just the feel in the room when the episode finished, I sensed that we, all of us were collectively understanding the message of the episode. And, and I sensed that, you know, we were all even wiping a few tears from our eyes, connecting everything that had been going on and then seeing Joel's journey and the other people's journeys through the episode. And, um, and then the montage, at the end, the music at the end. And I think this is one of those times where TV really can tell us something about um, ourselves and can help us kind of work through what what maybe is going on through uh, in the world around us as well. And I was glad that for the chance for this episode, having it then, and I'm glad for the chance to talk with um, both of you about the episode now. And um, we too are glad for you listeners out there and um, those of you watching along and we hope that um, you kind of maybe got a sense of through our discussion today of the new things that we were learning um, it, myself Ken and of course Jacob you know we've seen some of us have seen these episodes a number of times um, and putting them together and discussing them together we see all these new things emerge and um, we invite you to do the same with the things that you enjoy out there and um, we hope that you um, as we are um, as well are looking forward to the next episode um, whatever the topic may be and of course in the future the next northern exposure episode two where ken will rejoin us again 
we always sincerely appreciate you um, and we are glad to do this podcast together as well and we'll see you again soon